Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crazy Dreamer Network. My name is AJ and let's hop right into today's reading. So today's reading is a pick a card about guidance and messages from your North Node, okay? So just a brief explanation of what the North Node is. Um, I actually got it from a website called Cafe Astrology just so I can really emphasize and um, define for you guys what it is for those who don't know or for those who aren't that clear. So it says the North Node represents the kinds of experience that we must work to develop in order to work with our karma and to grow spiritually. The South Node represents those experiences and qualities that came naturally to us that are overdeveloped and we tend to fall back on. So in essence, the North Node is where you're going and the South Node is where you're from, okay? Technically speaking. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I digress. Let's hop into your pile selection. We have pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Pile number one, we have the devil. So this could be like a Capricorn in North Node, okay? Pile number two, we have the chariot. So this could be a Cancer in North Node. We have pile number three, the fool. So I think the fool could be Aries. Don't quote me on that, guys. But uh, this could be Aries in North Node with the fool. For pile number three and pile number four we have the star this could be aquarius in north node okay all right so pile number one pile number two pile number three and pile number four i love you all so much my dreamy dreamers and i'll see you in your reading bye hey pile number ones welcome to your reading so you all chose the devil card so you all could have your North Node in Capricorn. You don't have to if you pick this pile, but um, the attributes of North Node in Capricorn tend to be more status driven, right? Um, so basically in this lifetime, right? If your North Node is in Capricorn uh, for suggestion, right? Let's just say it is, it, even if it isn't. <clears throat> You could be more status driven about the material plane, right? About accumulating wealth, accumulating notoriety, doing things very well and meticulously and doing things in order to like, yeah, doing things in order to gain you status and a, and a reputation and mainly in the material realm. So at work, um, you know, with your colleagues, things of that nature, right? With North Node and Capricorn, you could tend to be more fixated on attributing material wealth in this lifetime. Um, whereas, let's say, since the opposite sign to Capricorn is Cancer, so that's, that's the South Node, right? So um, let's say instead of feeling emotionally satiated because you you already have done that work right you've already kind of like mastered your emotions think about king of cups right i really hope that makes sense y'all but um you know i'm not an astrologer i dabble in astrology I, I really like it so i try to like read up as much as possible but i'm not an astrologer and i definitely want to know more about astrology so you know tell me in the comment section like what else about Capricorn and North Node do you all know? Or would you all, you know, maybe like me to research? And, and if you would like me to delve more into Capricorn and North Node or just North Node, South Node readings from here on out, okay? <clears throat> but again, with the Devil card in your North Node, I, you know, granted it's Capricorn, so there could be obsessive tendencies when it comes to making it or something like that. I'm I wanted to do quotes, making it um, on this in the material world, right? So like material status, okay? Um, you all could be kind of fixated, even if your North Node isn't in Capricorn, right? But you can have these attributes of maybe being fixated on wanting to, um, like I said, accumulate wealth in this lifetime or accumulate some type of high status in this lifetime, okay? Whether it be a high paying job, career, uh, focus industry, you know what I'm saying? And being so good at what you do because there's these obsessive tendencies that uh, the devil card in particular in Capricorns 
tend to possess. Now, um, also a little more attributes with Capricorn, while they're very status driven, they really want to do things in a very, um, succinct way in a very like, um, grand way. Capricorns also tend to have like I always say like inner demons that they're trying to conquer, right? So that doesn't have to mean anything crazy. I'm just using that for lack of a better term, but like just inner things that they need to resolve that, th that they might ruminate on. Okay. So those could be kind of like, uh, the polarity of those attributes where, where the status and, you know, wanting to attribute wealth in this lifetime or some type of wealth or some type of like, you know, a uh, high status ranking in society. Um, the counter attributes would be maybe, um, addiction, you know, maybe, um, focusing too much on, on, on a certain thing, you know, um, ruminating, right. Um, being obsessive about certain things as well. Okay. So, <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> so let's get into you guys' reading. We have at the bottom of the deck, Chango with Contemplation. Now I'm using the Goddess Tarot by Chris Walder, I believe that's the author's name. Um, so this is basically the Hermit card in this deck at the bottom of the deck. So you guys could be kind of like, in a state of solitude right now, listening to your intuition with that white rabbit at the bottom of the deck, really sorting out and finding your way, finding your next step, right? Maybe some of you are on the heels of a huge accomplishment or something, right? And now you're like, well, what's next, right? So you're going inward right now to seek the answers that you know is only within, right? That you know only God, spirit, source, energy, or higher self can provide to you at this point in your journey, okay? <clears throat> so let's see. So yeah, Chango is literally, it's almost like Chango's dreaming because there's this like beautiful night sky in the foreground or in the background. And um, there's like this temple as well. But she, Chango's definitely talking to her higher self through this rabbit, through this white rabbit. It's actually reminding me of the Queen of Pentacles. However, I know in certain decks, the Queen of Pentacles, well, in the Right Away Tarot deck, the Queen of Pentacles has a brown hair, but I think they just didn't really pay too much attention. They kind of just like almost hit the hit the hair, right? Hit the rabbit in the, in the background, but it's, it's brown in the right away tarot and it's white here. So yeah, I feel like you've been in a deep state of contemplation about where it is you're going next and what it is, how you're going to get there. Right. And maybe through self-development work, maybe even through, um, like law of attraction, you, you tend to realize, well, look, I don't need to know the how, but I need to ground myself so I won't ruminate, right? North node and Capricorn. So I won't obsess about the how, just doing the actions daily until I get there. And Capricorns are extremely good at routine, right? So give me a second, y'all. I want to try to find the little guidebook for the um goddess tarot that i'm using because i want to read a little bit about chango to you all i could find the darn okay y'all i found it so let's see Okay, so let's pull her back up. So we have Chango with Contemplation. 
It says Chang'o, the Chinese moon goddess, was exiled to the moon because of her need to obtain divinity. While a white hair as her only companion, oh, with a white hair as her only companion, she spent much time alone contemplating life's mysteries. Exactly. It says, um, yeah. So Chang'o is a Chinese moon goddess, okay? Exiled to the moon because of her need to obtain divinity. With a white hair as her only companion, she spent much time alone contemplating life's mysteries, okay? So exactly. What I'm getting here, pile number ones, is that, like I suggested, like you guys have probably been in a state of solitude for some time now, trying to make your next move your best move, so to speak, okay? Um, but again, I digress. Let's hop into this reading. So you have the Five of Cups, the Ace of Staves, which is the, the Ace of Wands. We have the Queen of Cups, the Princess of Swords, S. Sanatelli with Fertility. This is another goddess. <clears throat> so card number three, Empress card. We have the Ten of Cups, Two of Staves, two of staves which is the Two of Wands. We have the Queen of Pentacles, which is ironic because I didn't realize the Queen of Pentacles was right here. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, we have the Moon with Gaia and we have the Nine of Pentacles right underneath the Empress card, which is interesting to me because the Nine of Pentacles is the precursor, okay, to the Empress card. So I think that's really interesting. Pile number ones, y'all are, y'all are very very close to something okay but i digress let's hop into the center of your reading with the queen of cups and the queen of pentacles pile number one so <clears throat> with the queen of cups and the queen of pentacles here look at how these people look at how these two queens look like they're almost facing off but in a very interesting way it's almost like are you thinking what i'm thinking type of energy right and the queen of cups has their um hand clasped over their face like oh my you know what i'm saying so the queen of pentacles is look like yep that's it i am thinking what you're thinking you're thinking what i'm thinking you know you're thinking what i'm thinking right so <clears throat> it's almost if pile number ones in regards to the messages from your north node that the two facets of your personality right now are being blended your practical side and your emotional side to me, which is really great because it offers a lot of um, understanding when it comes to empathy, but also getting the work done, right? So you could be in a very empathetic state right now, for sure, especially with the two queen of queens being the queen of cups and the queen of pentacles and empathetic in, in, in more ways than one. You're empathetic emotionally right now, and then you are empathetic uh, materially right now, okay? Some of you all could be water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or could be earth signs, Capricorn, Virgo, or Tauruses, okay? But again, again, pile number ones, right? So where, where you are right now or where you came from, Queen of Cups energy, right? Water energy. Like I was saying, South Node, since it's the opposite of the North Node, and since Capricorn is the opposite of Cancer, your South Node could be in Cancer, okay? And then your North Node could be in Capricorn, like I was suggesting, or an Earth, uh, uh, an Earth um, zodiac sign, right? And maybe not necessarily your south node needs to be in cancer but maybe a, a, a water sign um placement okay so it's almost like also you're you're coming from the emotional world to the material world look at how beautifully garbed this queen of pentacles is they're living in the lap of luxury so again like your North Node, whether it be in Capricorn or whether you just resonate with the sentiments here in this reading, you're going towards a uh, prosperity pile number ones. You're headed there. And it's almost like you're shocked, right? <laughs> 
uh, that Doja Cat uh, meme that's been going around. You're shocked. You're shocked. You're surprised. Don't be shocked, right? It's almost like you're shocked how much, maybe even material wealth or prosperity that you obtain in this lifetime, right? Especially where from where you were coming from, right? You're almost shocked how abundant you are now or or how abundant you will be. This is almost like your past self and then your future self is what I'm getting, okay? Um, you're just like, wow, in astonishment, like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I actually let my North Node guide me and I followed my North Node or my North Star, so to speak, and it guided me to all the riches of heaven and earth, so to speak, right? As above, so below, as within, so without. But you had to weather certain things. You had to generate a certain type of vibration to even get here. And you had to become emotionally intelligent. You had to master your emotionality first before you can master this physical realm, right? And you've done that. So now you're just you're just in a state of awe. It's like your past self is in a state of awe of your future self. Okay. And, and not only in a state of awe, but you're nurturing, you're caring, you're kind to your future self. Okay. You've taken care. I mean, you've taken care so much of maybe your past self that it's showing up on the 3d as just like, like you did. Like, and even, ugh, I wish you guys can see this clearly, how graceful and how gracious this queen of pentacle is looking at this queen of cups. These two queens are looking at each other in awe and with respect. So I just feel like, wow, this is really beautiful. Like, there's a lot of respect and nurturement coming in for you, from you, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so going back to the beginning of the reading with the Five of Cups and the Ten of Cups, exactly. You've alchemized a certain condition state, right? You went from the Five of Cups to the Ten of Cups? This is what I'm saying. It's almost like you had to master disappointment. You had to either master or transmute disappointment to a certain degree in order to get to this Ten of Cups, in order to get to that emotionally fulfilled state. And what did I say earlier? You had to conquer the emotional realm before you could get to this uh, material realm that you were searching for, right? That you That was searching for you as well, pile number ones. Okay, so certain things you have to leave behind, like this Three of Cups. It looks like this person depicted in this Five of Cups is just leaving behind this Three of Cups and going towards their Two of Cups, right? So maybe you realize, look, uh, to a certain degree, I, I only have a finite amount of energy per day and a finite amount of emotional capacity per day. So I have to make sure that to optimize this, I have to let certain things or certain people or certain emotional behaviors go. And I feel like you did that, right? Almost in the sense, less is more, you know? That's what I'm getting, like less is more. And although it hurts me to leave this behind, look at what comes, you know, after. Is a 10 of cups is emotional fulfillment. Yeah, you literally, it's like you quantum leaped into your Ten of Cups. You've made strides in less time than most, okay? Because with this North Node in Capricorn or with the attributes, right, of North Node in Capricorn, I feel as if you are really just, you, I feel as if you are really just, wanting to facilitate everything good that this world has to offer you and your loved ones, right? You want to bring that in. 
And the reason why I feel like you're accelerating in this process, pile number ones, is because you don't just want it for yourself. You want it for others as well. You want to you want it to help your community, to help your your loved ones, your friends, your families. Okay. With the Ace of Staves and the Two of Staves, again, you've been inundated with this newfound inspiration, this passion, this vigor, right? And you know where you're going. You know where you've been and you know where you're going. We have, and it's so interesting because we have one stave over another. So one wands card on top of the other. So you're, you took action. You took inspired action here and you're planning and you're plotting. And you, it's almost like you just feel like with this newfound inspiration from the ace of <clears throat> wands or the ace of staves, that you can do anything. You literally can do anything. You know where you've been, so you know where you're going. And that's what the two of wands pretty much pretty much suggest in a tarot reading is that it's almost like splitting forces, right? You can't do it alone and you're not going to do it alone. Uh and you've already conquered this ace of wands, right? You already conquered this passion, this vigor, this inspiration, this new beginning. <clears throat> and now you're setting forth onto your path, onto your north node, right? You're planning <clears throat> to take over the world, so to speak. You're planning, look, and we have the world, Gaia. <clears throat> you're planning your next, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my goodness. You're planning your next move and your next, um, where you're going, like uncharted territories, okay? Because you've already mastered taking inspired action, being inspired, being passion filled, being driven by passion. <clears throat> okay. So with the, <clears throat> with the princess of swords and the world Gaia, people really could be all, <laughs> could be awestruck with you right now. Because the queen, we have the queen of cups and the princess of swords, and they're both looking in awe at this empress. How beautiful, how gorgeous, how abundant, how rich this empress seems to be or look. It's almost like they're, they're aspiring to be this empress, right? With the Princess of Swords and the World Gaia here, it's like you are so curious and ready to take up whatever the world has to offer you right now, okay? And it's interesting because to me with the Two of Wands and the World card, we have like two signifiers of the world is yours. The world is yours. The world is in the palm of your hands and you're ready. You're ready. You're mentally ready to take on the world, so to speak, okay? It's almost like you have your eye on the prize and the prize is the whole entire world. The world is yours, okay? Yeah, I feel like uh, with the princess of swords here, there also could be a message coming into you about some type of new opportunity, about the, su the success that you have or have been having or will have, okay? These could be downloads from spirit, okay? But you're very focused right now. You're just ready. You're ready. You're ready to start anew with the Princess of Swords here. And with Fertility, Est Sanatelli, Est, Est, Est Sanatelli, excuse me, y'all, if I butcher that, please forgive me. And the Nine of Pentacles, you're literally leveling up here. You just have. You've taken that next step from the nine of pentacles, which is a precursor to the empress. Like you're literally go going to achieve what you've been wanting in this lifetime. And you're going to be adorned <laughs> with the riches of heaven and earth beyond your wildest conception, pile number ones. Okay. You're feeling creative, beautiful, um, nurturing, kind, loving. And it's interesting because we have two queens here. There's like no masculine energy on this in this reading, which is so hilarious to me. So you could be a little, you could 
need to incorporate more masculine energy as well in order to reach what it is that you're trying to do, right? In order to accomplish what it is that you're trying to do because masculine energy really stands for taking action, okay? Whereas feminine energy is just in the receptive mode. So maybe you're just receiving all of these inspirations and downloads and um, abundance right now, you know? Maybe it's just your time to receive because you have been in this state of like, you came from disappointment. You you reached that emotional fulfillment to a certain degree. And now you're just planning. There was a planning stage here. And now maybe you're just receiving, okay? You could be receiving a lot of attention as well. With the I, I say that because we have the Queen of Cups and the Princess of Swords here. And I just want to show you how they're looking at this Empress. They're both like, oh my gosh. And look, she's just like giving them a show. She's just giving them a show, but effortlessly, very gracefully, okay? So yeah, pile number ones. I feel like maybe you all have put in that action and work. Maybe you all came from doing a lot and now you're just simply in receiving mode. And you're about to put on a show for people. You're about to put on a freaking show for people. And with this queen of, the queen of pentacles and the two of staves are looking towards their 10 of cups as well. It's almost like your emotional side, right? And your logical side. <laughs> just wants abundance, but your material side and your, your fiery side, your action taking side just wants happiness. It's interesting. Very fascinating. But let's, let's pull some more cards. Pile number ones. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Tell me more, Spirit. What else do our pile number ones need to know? about messages from their north node what does pile number one's north node want them to know god clear concise accurate messages so we have card number three solar plexus chakra i feel like you're just feeling more comfortable in your skin pile number ones you're just beginning to feel more comfortable in your skin right <clears throat> you're beginning to be more of yourself. You're more self-confident, okay, with the solar plexus chakra coming out. And it's interesting, too, because that ace of staves, uh, I wanted to bring up the sacral chakra. Tell us more, spirit. Okay. Okay, so we have card number eight, trapped in fear. And I feel like this solar plexus chakra energy could have came after um, a bout of anxiety, or feeling trapped by sadness, fear that wasn't real, you know, disappointment. It trapped you for too long, but you ended up coming out of the other on the other side of it, feeling. Look at look at what just popped out. Sacral chakra. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, again, you came on. You came out the other side feeling better about where it is that you're going and what it is that you're doing. Because look, even look at this light. I'm just now noticing this. That's so funny. And then look at the solar plexus chakra. It's almost like you are scared of your own light. You are scared of your own magnificence. You are scared or anxious about your own glory, pile number ones. Wow. Look at how this person does not want to look into this light. They don't want to see how brightly they can shine. Okay, so pile number ones, I'm getting, there could have been a little bit of self-sabotaging here. Um, and that's what your North Note wants you to know. Never be afraid of your power, right? Look at what, what, what we have at the bottom of the deck. Never be afraid of your power. Um, because you shining bright allows others 
to do the same thing. It encourages others to do the same thing because once they see that you do it, they feel that they could do it as well. If they could do it, I can do it, right? And with card number two, sacral chakra, I feel like you're getting your passion back. You're getting your energy back. Whatever it is that you're doing, keep doing it. Uh, because I feel like your North Node wants you to know that's your bread and butter. That's what's going to be your saving grace, okay? Is you really being comfortable in who it is that you are, feeling comfortable in your skin, and just moving forward in your power, right? Because that's power. When we feel comfortable with us and comfortable within our skin, it makes us feel limitless to what we can um, then accomplish, right? And we don't hold ourselves back. We don't self-sabotage. And I feel like that, you know, that tends to happen to a lot of us um, in life. You know, we start to achieve a little bit of success and then we pull back because it's almost like programmed in us too. Um, yeah, so <laughs> let's... Uh, Pull more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Last messages for our pile number ones. Messages from their north node. Guidance, wisdom, and insight from pile number ones. North node spirit. Clear, concise messages from pile number ones. North node. Ooh, wow. Look at this. We have card number 23 and look at this. Two and three. Okay. <laughs> so interesting. And we have Aquarius. I know. So you know how great you are. You know your capacity. You know when you give uh, your college try, so to speak, that, that effort, when you put in effort in your life, you're unstoppable. Okay. With the Aquarius coming in as well, Pile number ones, um, I feel like you have a lot of knowledge within you. Saturn could uh, be a part of your uh, Saturn, which is Capricorn energy as well, which I think is pretty fascinating because Saturn is right in the background of this card. Um, but yeah, with, with Aquarius, I know coming out, I feel like you know your brilliance, you know your capacity for greatness. And I feel like your North Node wants you to know, keep going. Don't get in your head, right? Because trapped in fear, card number eight, it's giving eight of swords energy. Swords is, you know, air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. And I feel like embody more Aquarius energy, whereas you can detach from the outcome in order to gain, um, gain the things that you want, right? Because when you're not thinking about an outcome, when you're just doing something from love or from creativity, and you don't really care about the outcome, then you could just be more fluid in your approach, right? And it's interesting because Aquarius is an air sign, but a lot of people misinterpret Aquarius for water signs because they are the water bearers, right? So not only do they seek to heal within healing themselves, they heal the world, right? And I feel like you're starting to understand that more and more and more. The best person I can become, that's going to reverberate and it's going to echo out into the world and to eternity. So why wouldn't I take charge and pull, take the reins on my life and really direct it in the best way I can? Really go for it, right? You could be accumulating a lot of knowledge right now also with Aquarius. I know Aquarius is, they're innovators, right? So you could be doing something that has never been done before, pile number ones. And, you know, maybe that's where that self-sabotage came in just because you're just like, you know, how am I going to get this done? Like, I, I, I'm almost afraid of my own power, you know, but I feel like you're shying away from that fear and you're coming into the light, you know, the light of prosperity and innovation and ingenuity and creativity and you know you don't want you want the best self-fulfilling prophecy not the worst you know 
so let's see. Um, let's pull a couple of moonology cards to end your reading, pile number ones. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving pile number ones clear, concise, accurate messages to conclude their reading advice guidance and wisdom from their north node spirit also two and three is five and numerologically speaking we have 23 here and 23 there so there could be a lot of change changes that you're going through i'm shocked we don't have the death card here just because it seems like just a transitional period could be you know afoot or be happening now Tell me more, Spirit. Last messages for our pile number ones. Advice, guidance, and wisdom from their north node. Advice, guidance, and wisdom from pile number one's north node. Thank you. Thank you. One more card, Spirit. goodness what in the heck you cannot make this up show the world the real you full moon in aquarius this is what you're about to do it's almost like you were afraid of the limelight you were afraid of the light pile number ones you're about to your star your star the aquarius is a star card you're a star oh my goodness you see it takes me a little bit but when it clicks it, cl <laughs> it clicks you're a freaking star pile number one shine your light do not be afraid to shine your light on the world because the world needs your light especially right now shine your light you're a freaking star i'm getting that karen bailey ray song like a star oh my gosh i'm gonna listen to that after <laughs> maybe i'll uh maybe that'll be you guys' channeled uh message too like a star just like the star that the, I, I forgot the words but yeah, you guys are stars. Do not be afraid to show the world the real you, to be your most authentic self, okay? So let's see, what else? Oh my goodness, look at all this Aquarius energy. Yeah, y'all are stars. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. Some of you all could have a lot of Aquarius energy in your natal chart. We have adjustments are required, third quarter moon and we have a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aquarius so I feel like exactly you guys are gonna open up you guys are gonna open up you're gonna bring more of you more oomph right more more uh fire into more fire which is the equivalent of desire right is desire I feel like your desire kind of waned for a little bit right on something but now it's picking back up and it as it says a fiery climax approaches full moon in aries you guys are more driven you're getting that masculine energy back into uh back into alignment so you can pursue the uh life that you've always dreamt of living and and receiving right which you will with the with the card number three fertility um you will you you're gonna get this a lot of Aquarius energy. That's fascinating to me. Uh, yeah. Wait. Okay. But yeah, pot number one. So that is all the time that I have. I love you all so much, my dreamy dreamers. Um, if you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, and anyone who could benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number twos, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose the chariot card in regards to your north node or messages from your north node. Granted, you choosing this card doesn't necessarily mean that your north node has to be in the sign of cancer. You can just embody these attributes that the north node in the side sign of cancer, you know, attributes. <laughs> all right so let's begin with your reading again you guys chose this beautiful ca uh, ch uh, chariot card excuse me so in regards to your no north node potentially being in cancer obviously it's not going to be for all of you maybe some of you but uh yeah i feel like the attributes of north node and cancer could be that like maybe 
um, maneuvering through the material world and now trying to find spiritual and emotional sustenance, right? Uh, really uh, wanting to attain emotional satisfaction and um, emotional fulfillment, okay? Uh, the chariot represents uh, the zodiac sign Cancer in the tarot. And with that being said, Cancers tend to be very nurturing. It's a feminine aspected uh, zodiac sign. So uh, its main attributes are on the feminine side, right? On the yin side. And uh, long story short, with that being said, Cancerian um, energy tends to be more nurturing, more emotional, right? More... Um, very psychic in nature as well, okay? Um, maybe the darker attributes of the Cancerian personality could also lean more towards codependency of, of people or of uh, relationships, um, particularly um, romantic relationships, okay? And again, um, like I, like I was suggesting, you, you all don't have to have your North Node in Cancer, but you could resonate with some of these attributes in regards to this uh, North Node sign, okay? Also, just because, you know, readings and tarot readings are very fluid in its nature, you all could have your South Node in Cancer and it's coming up, okay? Um Again, I'm not an astrologer, so I'm not an expert. I'm just kind of going from the wisdom that I've acquired about astrology, and it it's probably not that much. So just bear with me, y'all. Um, but again, your, your south node could be in Cancer, and um, maybe your north node is in Capricorn. If so, I would definitely check out pile number ones. Call number twos, even if it's just for a few minutes. But um, again, your south node could be in Cancer, and this is could be maybe even where you're coming from, uh, and 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 uh, how you got to to that north node, or or the steps required to get to your north node. Okay, uh, but again, I feel like you all are passionate people. You all are driven people. You all uh, could have like a lot of will and vigor of your will. Um, you all could be like rebels or rebellious and, you know, maybe leaning towards bucking the system, so to speak, uh, in, in the most, you know, <laughs> you know, positive ways, right? Uh, maybe you all are into countercultures as well. I don't know why I'm getting that, but yeah. But it's like you're ready. I'm, I'm, feel like, I'm feeling like you're down for the ride, pile number twos. Y'all are pretty much down for anything. You're down for your loved ones, your family, friends, and just where life has to take you, okay? So I digress. Let's move forward in your reading. We have at the bottom of the deck the Nine of Staves, which is the Nine of Wands. Um, so I feel like at this point in time, your North Note may be telling you that healing is required, okay? Or uh, also, don't give up, okay? Do not give up. You're on to something. Keep moving forward. Maybe you felt like, you know, you're weary, you're tired, okay? But you're almost there. You're almost to completion, okay? Nine in and of itself, numerologically, is a number of completion. So you see how in the background, the sun's about to rise, it, you know, it's about to become sunny. And it's almost like this, this princess or this, you know, goddess figure energy is is anticipating the sunrise because it's been dark for too long so to speak right it's almost like that saying it's always darkest before the dawn and the dawn is coming so so just anticipate the the dawn and this is what this person in this in this card is doing okay so keep going keep moving forward right the chariot card is all about forward movement and momentum onward and upward right you, you might be down, but you're not out. So keep going, okay? So let's read off of your cards. Pile number twos. We have Venus with love. Uh, so that's the lover's card. We have the two of staves, which is the two of wands. We have the five of pentacles, ace of pentacles, the prince of cups, which is the knight of cups. We have Est Sanatelli with fertility. We have the princess of cups. So, oh, excuse me. This is the empress card. Um, we have the Princess of Cups, which is the Page of 
cups, if I'm not mistaken. We have the Two of Pentacles. We have Freya with Power, which is the Emperor card. And then we have Kion Yin with Sacrifice, which is the Hangman, okay? So going back to the center of your reading, pile number twos, with the Five of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles, you, you all could have maybe been feeling a little down in your luck, so to speak, lately. You all could have been feeling like maybe like you are bearing the winter and it's summertime, okay? You're bearing the winter, you know, um, you're bearing the cold or you've been left out in the cold, so to speak. And maybe you've been maybe even a little um, in victim mode, right? Pile number twos. Um, but what I'm getting is that I'm almost getting that like these are two aspects of your personality and it's like someone is just bundled up like they cannot take it they don't, they just don't know how much longer they can freaking be out here whereas this person you know they're showing their face they're looking towards the light they're looking at how beautiful the snow is right they're seeing the light in the darkness okay uh with this five of pentacles and with the two of pentacles even this uh goddess looking towards these um ladies in the five of pentacles it's almost like it's okay you're almost there and you're about to achieve a state of balance again okay so it's almost like messages from your north node want you to know just keep going keep going because you're almost to your state of balance you're almost back in your center so to speak okay with the two of pentacles and and physically so uh, you could be dealing with maybe multiple streams of income or jug juggling two things at once, right? Uh, typically, the two of pentacles does stand for like juggling the material with your emotional state, right? So you could have been, you could be doing that and doing that very well now, especially coming from this five of pentacles, coming from this low vibrational lack energy, right? Um, and it's like you're you're going up you know, the ladder to the high vibrations uh, in which you can sustain, in which you can balance, right? In which you can be more centered and take a more centered approach to your daily task, okay? So going back to the beginning of the reading with Venus, love and fertility, I want to read about both of these goddesses. We all know Venus is the goddess of love. So maybe you were taking some time to focus on your love life pile number twos, or have been taking some time to just really like luxuriate yourself is what I'm getting, especially with Venus love here. And then fertility, I'm feeling like you are in your feminine times 10. Maybe you're making the decisions to just be more open, be more receptive to, just to life, to whatever it is, even if those were highs and lows, ups and downs, you were just embracing it, you know? You could have also just been maybe even a little lazy because the Empress to a certain degree is all about receiving. There is no taking action here. There is just laying and taking and receiving and, you know, yeah, and getting what they want, but ultimately just not taking any action, okay? And even look, look at Venus here. This, she's just chilling. She is literally relaxing, luxuriated, and um, Est Sanatelli is is also you know celebrating and just being in their feminine, right? So I do want to read a little bit of these cards, and it's interesting. This card number six, and we have card number three yet, but give me one second. So let's see. So let's read fertility first, just because it's card number three. It's the first one that came out. And it says, Est Sanatelli, the benevolent Navajo corn goddess symbolizes the ever-changing, ever-fertile earth. Like the earth itself, Est Sanatelli appears as a young maiden for the spring and summer months. It says, as the wheel of the year changes to fall and winter, she changes in age to a crone. Very interesting. And I want to read this meaning associated with, um, with Est Sanatelli because it says, feelings of fertility and abundance in new relationship, which celebrates one's growth as a woman. Wow. Okay, it says creativity and pregnancy. So some of you all could be maybe very fertile right now, very 
you know, maybe feeling like you want to have a child or maybe you are pregnant or, you know, maybe you're just feeling very, um, very fertile, very creative. Maybe you're pregnant with creativity right now and you're just like, maybe you don't even know exactly what to do with it. Okay. Um, uh, you also could be, um, really maybe indulging in a new relationship with the love card here, Venus. Pile number ones, I mean, pile number twos. And it's interesting, right? Because I'm, I'm about to read Venus, but I don't know if y'all can see, but Venus has a puppy <laughs> underneath her bed or whatever this is. Venus is just living, living her life. <laughs> Okay, let's let's read love. So Okay, so it says let's grab this again. I don't know why I put it down. So it says uh card number six, love Venus, created from the happy union of the sea and sky. Venus, the Roman goddess of love, has been described by many as the queen of pleasure and passion. This is hilarious to me. Okay, so it says uh, a renewed awareness of the nature of passionate love and what it what it is what is needed to encourage it. Artistic creativity, sexuality, integration of the masculine, feminine, feminine, and new important relationship. Very interesting because I've never I've never heard from any other like guidebook or the interpretation of the Empress card as talking about a new relationship coming into being, but both of these suggest that. So yeah, you all could be maybe like falling in love or, you know, finding a new relationship that's very compatible and that allows you to be maybe in your feminine, whether male or female, it just allows you to receive love, right? I feel like you're very receptive and open to a new lover or to a new love offer that's coming in. You're, you're just, and you're ready. It's like people can tell, like you're fertile with wanting this energy in your life and people could tell, from a mile away, like, you know, maybe you're getting approached by people. Maybe you're being asked out on dates and things of that nature because you're just, you're ready to love. NDRE, I'm ready to love. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's so interesting. Okay. So with the two of staves, which is the two of wands and the princess of cups, I feel like maybe you've planned this. This is something that maybe you have been manifesting and almost your intuition ha had been telling you was on the precipice and you were just kind of waiting and planning and doing your own thing and, you know, realizing that you can attain anything in this world that you want because you have done the emotional work, right? You have done the spiritual and the emotional work and you're just kind of waiting very patiently for the things that you have planned to sprout up, right? With the Princess of Cups, and 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 this is the Page of Cups, this, um, it could be a message coming in. You could be just getting a lot of psychic hits lately. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on this Princess of Cups. That's so interesting. Two of Wands and the Page of Cups. It's almost like you saw this coming from a mile away. Yeah. Look, look at the 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 two of wands here. They're like, it's almost like they're watching someone come towards them. And then this Princess of Cups is almost pretending like she she didn't do anything. It's just it just happened naturally, right? So you have planned this all along, pile number twos. And when it came, you just kind of went with the flow, right? Just kind of went with it. Acted like you, you know. Oh me? <laughs> you know? Little old me. So again, with the ace of pentacles and we have card number four, power with Freya. Yeah, there was someone who came and look, and we have two chariots. Now, when do you ever see the emperor on a chariot? This is so interesting, right? 
So someone is, yeah, you're moving forward with your life or with the offer, with the love offer, with the Ace of Pentacles, okay? Could be an Aries coming in too with an offer for you, pile number three, pile number twos. But I feel like you're just taking the reins of your life and you're you're going to take what's offered to you and the best offer, right? The biggest offer, right? The, the one with the most potential, okay? For growth, okay? And development. And you're going to see that coming like from a mile away. You're going to see who it is. You're not going to have to guess. You're not going to have to second guess yourself or contemplate or anything like that okay we have the prince of cups which is the knight of cups and then we have kian yin sacrifice there's a lot of insinuation with fertility and babies kian yin is holding a child in her hands so like i said someone could be asking you out there could be a love offer being made here with the prince of cups and what I'm getting also is if you want everlasting love, right? I don't know where this everlasting love came from, but pile number two is if y'all, if you all are searching for a love that lasts or everlasting love, you may have to sacrifice this knight energy or this prince energy with maybe being fickle, right? Maybe being in and out of what it is that you want. You have to be very certain about what it is that you want moving forward, Okay is also what I'm getting. Um, again, with the Prince of Cups, there could be someone, you could be needing to sacrifice or let go of your childish ways or your old ways of looking at love or just wanting to be in the romantic, not romantic, but uh, the, the honeymoon stages of a relationship. Some people are obsessed with the honeymoon stages of relationships so much so that after that honeymoon stage fizzles out and then you, we have, you know, people have to kind of like be adult or mature about the relationship moving forward. It's almost like they, they tend to be in a more self-sabotaging like thing when it comes to love. I didn't think this was going to be a love reading pile number uh, twos, but it seems like you're your north node is trying to tell you something, maybe even about your past. If let's say your north node could be in Cancer, but I'm getting more south node energy, which is interesting to me with this chariot card. Um, but it's almost saying your north node is saying that you have to clean up something. Your emotionality about the way you dealt with the past, maybe even pertaining to relationships or love, you have to clean that up. Uh, and you are cleaning that up in order to maybe sustain a, 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 a long-term loving relationship. And I say clean that up because we have sacrifice with Kian Yin, right? And I feel like Kian Yin's story was Kian Yin was willing to sacrifice herself for the happy to ensure that everyone on this world, every child in this world, and I, I, I could be paraphrasing Kian Yin's story. I'll, I'll read it out the book in a minute. But to make sure that every child was happy or healthy or something like that. But she was willing to be the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, for others, right? So she she had to let go of something maybe even important to her, which was her life or her livelihood in order to, you know, for the better good of others, for the highest good of others. Not to say that that's what you all have to do. This is just... It's, I don't know if it's mythology, but I think it is. <laughs> this is just mythology. So take from it, <clears throat> you have to sacrifice who you were in order to become who you want to be, okay? Or in order to gain what you want for your future, right? <clears throat> and who you were might have been indecisive about love, just loving the the the, the perks, okay? of a relationship and not what it takes to sustain one okay so let's see let's read a little bit of kian yin's story so it says um 
Honored as a holy mother of compassion, Qianyan is one of the most beloved goddess of China. Instead of allowing herself to enjoy, enjoy heaven's delight, Qianyan vowed never to leave the earth until the last human was free from pain, sacrificing herself for the greater good of all. Yeah, so I, I, I remembered a little bit of Qianyan's story, but that's what I'm saying. Like, not necessarily saying you guys have to sacrifice yourself for everybody or the betterment of everybody. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm what I'm implying is you have to sacrifice your old way for the betterment, for the highest good of your future self, right? Which is the highest good of all, if you think about it. So yeah, that's what I'm getting, pile number twos. Let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Tell us more. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos from their north node. What guidance and messages does Pile Number Two's North Node want them to know? Clear, concise, accurate messages from Pile Number Two's North Node Spirit. <laughs> okay, thank you. So we have Card Number Eight: Emotional Withdrawal. Emotional Withdrawal. Okay. So yeah, you all could be and it, this is interesting because this was reminding me of the eight of cups you all could be in a state of prayer or a state of a meditative state right like i'm saying you all could be walking away from something that no longer serves you in order to ground you spiritually into what it is that you say you want right you're going towards your nine of cups that uh emotional satisfaction as well tell us more spirit messages from pile number two's north node we have at the bottom of the decks bottom of the deck card number six memories of love you could be dealing with someone from the past as well pile number twos we have card number two movement choices and decisions oh wow you guys actually got four cards so we have card number zero, which is new beginnings, which is like the full card. And then you have card number 10, destiny. So again, pile number twos, what I'm getting is that you all are starting over and really praying, you know, really consulting God's spirit, your, your higher self about where it is to go next. Okay. Pile number twos, if you all felt compelled to watch a little bit of pile number ones or was wavering about which piles you wanted to choose, definitely go back to pile number ones after this reading, of course, uh, and check that out because I think there could be a few messages for you, just a suggestion. Um, but again, like I was saying, you all could be just really communing with yourself, um, talking to yourself gaining better insights and clarity about the things that you've asked for especially emotional clarity right well card number two movement choices and decisions i feel like you have a lot um being offered to you right now so you want to make the best choice for you and everyone involved right you don't just want to make a choice that's selfish or that only benefits another person you want yourself and the person involved to be harmonious when it comes to, you know, y'all's next step, okay? Well, card number zero, new beginnings, what I'm getting is that I feel like you're going to just really take this leap of faith uh, on something and begin new. This could be with someone or just something, right? This could be just in regards to what it is that you want, your dreams, your, your goals, your ambitions, right? Especially with... Uh, Card number zero, new beginnings. I feel like you're just taking that leap of faith into the unknown and just letting the universe, God, spirit, source, energy catch you along the way. What, uh, what card number 10, destiny, you're following your path towards your destiny. What your heart is telling you, where your heart is calling you to. You're following your heart, <laughs> pile number two. So you're following your heart, okay? And that is your destiny, okay? is to follow your heart, be conscientious of what you're doing and how you're doing, right? So taking that head with you, taking your, your logical side with you, but um, making a really good balance between the heart and the mind. And I think with that, you're, you're making the right choices in life, okay? So let's pull 
another card. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Tell us more. Advice, advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number twos. Clear, concise, accurate advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number two, Spirit. Just one card. Clear advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number twos. What does pile number twos north know? I want them to know right now, Spirit. I'm going to take this card. Um, look at this. What have I been saying this whole freaking reading? I, I, I'm tripped out myself. So we have card number 42, South Node, Life's Bits. Okay? So what your North Node wants you to know is that I feel like you're leaving... You're leaving a lot of antiquated stuff behind, pile number twos. You're leaving your old self behind and you're venturing into the unknown to your new self towards your north node. Definitely go check out pile number ones, pile, pile number twos, even if it's just for like five to 10 minutes. With card number 42, four and two is six. Again, material. Now, now you're starting to gain more insight about what you want on this 3D, right? I feel like you following your heart is now taking you to your north node, right? It's almost like even check this out. They have, you could be committed to something. You could have monetary success. You can have personal development success or exponential growth, or you could have ideas and be living your dreams. Where are you going to go first? What, what, what decisions are you going to make? What, what, what door, what, what portal are you going to go into? Right? So yeah, card number 50, 42 South node life's debt at the bottom of the deck. We have card number 30, sorry. We have card number 31, seventh house partners. Maybe it's you going at it alone. Like that's what you're leaving behind. You going at it alone, you know? you're meant to find love. And with that, I feel like then you'd be conquering your South node and be led back towards your North node, right? Your North star, where you belong, where it is you're going, your destiny, your calling, right? So let's see. That's so interesting that the South node card came up. Okay. So, um, Let's pull some more cards to conclude your reading. Pile number two. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Oh, I do want to read, if I could find the guidebook, a little bit of the South Node, card number 42 for y'all. <laughs> I can't find the guidebook, y'all, but. Oh, yep, here it is. Okay, so. I just want to read a little bit of this South Node card to you all. Card number 42 says, South Node life's debts. Karma, when properly understood, is just the mechanics through which consciousness manifests. Deepak Chopra, exactly. Um, it says, the South Node represents a karmic point in our charts where certain matters must be discharged or cast off in order to develop and move on towards greater things. OMG. It says the Southern Lunar Node is also called the Dragon's Tail. And this is where most past karma lies in the astrological chart. It says the South Node is the place where we are challenged and growth occurs through some kind of pain. It says at the same time, the South Node is realistic and is the area of the horoscope that shows how we can know and understand who we truly are. 
It says, while the North Node opens doorways, the South Node represents karmic debts, which can make life circumstances hard. But neither the North nor the South Node are all good luck or bad luck. In fact, when it comes to the nodes, what will be given is what has been earned. Exactly. It says the South Node is always a key to what has been left unfinished or unresolved in your life. What lies therein is what we bring from not only our childhoods, but also past lives. Okay. So let's see. It says when the South Node card turns up in a reading, it is a turning point. It is a time of endings and beginnings. Understand that there is something about to close that has been held in place for a long time. Familiar ways will end exactly ushering you forward in new ways through different developments you are ready to step out of the rut and align yourself with a higher vision exactly uh pile number twos that's awesome yeah that's exactly you know kind of what the reading had implied even prior to to reading uh from the guidebook right so you 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 all are ready to surrender and to sacrifice um you know what no longer serves which is you know it's almost like you're upgrading to the Queen of Cups or the King of Cups, right? Instead of the Prince of Cups. <clears throat> so last messages, Spirit, for our pile number twos. Clear, concise, accurate advice, guidance, and wisdom from pile number two's North Node to conclude their reading, Spirit. Messages and guidance from pile number two's North Node. Okay, one more card. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. So we have at the bottom of the deck, your dreams need a practical plan, full moon in Taurus. So exactly, I feel like you're planning your life. You know, especially with the two of wands here, you know where you're going, right? Or you know where you want to go. So whether it is that you know you have to alleviate certain uh, characteristics of maybe your personality that maybe didn't serve you or no longer serves you and giving that up will add to your success or transmuting those energies will add to your success it seems like that's what you're doing okay so this was the first card that came out luck is on your side new moon in Sagittarius I have a feeling like you getting out this rut it's almost like maybe you were a little afraid like oh, man when i get out this rut i'm gonna have a lot of work to do i'm gonna have to play catch up and i feel like there's not it's not <clears throat> it's almost like you're gonna pick up from where you left off but you're not gonna have to catch up as much as you maybe had assumed pile number twos okay because you're lucky luck is on your side right and it's interesting because <clears throat> i'll say just in my life recently the word luck has been st standing out to me more. So I'm pretty sure, you know, luck is just used in everyday vocabulary. And maybe in the recent past, I just haven't really paid attention to it. But for some reason, luck, the word in and of itself has been just standing out, has been like, just been everywhere, you know? So what I'm getting is that maybe you are lucky right now. Maybe they're maybe or blessed, you know, I, you know, on this channel, we don't believe in luck. We know how blessed we are, but sometimes we forget, <laughs> you know, we forget we're human. So just the daily processes of life kind of takes its toll on our psyche from day to day. And it just, maybe we lapse in our consciousness as it pertains to how blessed we are just to be living and breathing and, 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 being given the gift of life every single morning, you know? Um, but again, pile number twos, I feel like you 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 all have not regressed <laughs> as far as you may have thought, right? You could pick up from where you left off and then the ball will continue to roll, right? We have a time for healing, balsamic moon. I feel like maybe if you were in a rut or maybe just, you know, taking some time to let those other energies dissipate while you're, um, you know, coming to conclusions of what you want, planning and stuff like that, you are healing. And maybe you didn't even realize you were healing. You're like, what is going on? Why am I just, just sitting, just almost like stuck, like stuck in a state of just being here, right? A rut. You're healing, okay? And even the nine of the nine of uh, staves, the nine of wands, suggested that earlier on in the reading. 
So take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. I feel like you can you can let out a sigh of relief pile number twos because you're getting back into the swing of things. You're getting back on the ball, so to speak, okay? And you're becoming, you're still becoming, okay? You're becoming that person of your dreams and you're taking someone with you, okay? You're not doing it alone. You're taking someone with you and I love that. And it could be a potential spouse or a lover or a connection, a soulmate connection that's very deep for you, okay? So pile number twos, I love you so much, my dreamy dreamers. Fascinating reading. And I'm very proud of you for, you know, pulling yourself back up and getting back into the, the the passions of life and, and 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 really understanding what you want out of life right now. I'm very proud of you, okay? So with that being said, pile number twos, I love you so much, my dreamy dreamers. If you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please give this reading a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number threes, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose the full card as uh, guidance and messages from your north node. So, you know, bear with me. Uh, I'm not an astrologer by any means. Uh, I dabble in, you know, and in, and I'm interested in astrology and just learning all about north node, south node, the different transits and stuff like that. So if I get this wrong, please excuse me. But some of you, some of your north nodes could be in the sign of Aries. Um, doesn't have to be, but you can also embody the attributes of a North Node in the sign of Aries. Now, again, just to reiterate, your North Node is just primarily, obviously, it's a point, it's an aspect of your chart that, um, you know, is more of how you need to start living to embody, you know, where you're going versus uh, maybe how you've been living in the past, right? Maybe from past lives or, you know, even how you were you know, how you were living when you were growing up or something like that, or, you know, the traits that you embodied as you grew up, as you grew up. How I describe the North Node is that like, you, like basically, like, let's say, for example, my North Node is in Capricorn. So like, I know a lot of people's North Node, depending on their year of birth is the same, right? <clears throat> but um, let's say that like, as a North Node in Capricorn, um, in my lifetime, if I want to, how can I put this? In my lifetime, I may need to embody the attributes and the traits of a Capricorn in order to like fulfill, in order to kind of like embody the highest version of myself, so to speak. Okay. So that's how I kind of correlate to South, the North Node and South Node. Now the South Node is what, what aspects, what traits I need to leave behind in order to get to that North Node, right? In order to embody uh, and, and fulfill myself in, in its totality. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So again, with the full here, some of you all might embody the attributes of an Aries or might embody the attributes of a carefree, loving spirit, a very innocent spirit, a very like novice spirit that, you know, can end up anywhere at any time. And that just takes the bull by the horns in life and like leaps, take leaps and bounds with their faith and just is just so free and, um, you know, embody that carefree type of energy, right? Wonderlust, wonder, wanderers and things of that nature, right? Uh, also with the full card is just like, just be conscientious of where it is that you're going, right? Don't be so lackadaisical, right? Because this person, they're very carefree, but they're not paying attention that there's a cliff right there, right? Because they're so like, well, yeah, like everything, like, <laughs> you know, everything is grand and everything is, 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 gonna go my way which you know I always say err on the side of positive expectancy however um just make sure that you're taking logic with you don't be so full of folly right be majority folly but also have like that 10 percent that reels you in right with the dog being here in the corner you're protected you're safe you have a loyal companion you have that loyalty of god spirit source energy i just saw 3333 33 on the um the the timer too so that can mean a lot you're protecting you're safe and your an angel ancestors and guides are here to almost be that parachute you know so if you're you fall you're gonna land smoothly like that's what i'm getting out of your life but just be take 
take a good amount of consciousness consciousness with you right so even if you just leave, live 80% of your life doing what you want, being at the whim of your desires and stuff like that, be 20% logical and like grounded as well. Okay. So that's what I'm getting that the messages from your North node, what your North node is trying to tell you, whether it be in your particular sign or just attributes that you all could, um, you, you all resonate with, right? So again, let's hop into your reading pile number threes. We have at the bottom of the deck oppressions, the wall, wall, wall lock, the wall, wall lock. Okay. So this is the tower card in this deck. Okay. So I do want to, I want to read a little bit of this for you, but what I'm seeing is that here with oppression, maybe you are going through some type of storm, right? And you felt like you had no shelter. You felt like you had nothing to protect you from this storm. You were just super vulnerable. Yeah. It, it, when it rains, it pours, so to speak, right? So what I'm getting in regards to the messages from your North Node is that if, if it's raining and it feels like it's pouring on your head, there the sun is is about to shine on you. There is going to be some type of alleviation, some type of spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical alleviation of your problem, so to speak. There's, there's a solution coming in, okay? Uh, and these are messages from your North Node to get you back on path, right? It's so interesting, pile number three. Here's the thing. With the Two of Staves, I always think of the Two of Staves or the Two of Wands as a North Node card. You're on the right path, right? The North Node is like almost following your North Star, right? Um, continue to follow your true North, right? Your true calling, that North Star, right? And that's what the Two of Wands suggests. And the Two of Wands or Two of Staves in this deck has come out in every last reading. I hope I don't lose that streak in the last reading because this is the third pile, it's come out in first, second, and third. So ho hopefully it'll come out in the fourth. I think that would be just grand because it, it's it's more so evoking all the energy that we're putting into this pile, right? Pile number three. So again, I do want to read just a little bit of the oppression card from the guidebook. Let's see. Okay. So let's grab this. So let's let's get to reading this. It says oppression, the Wawalock. During the dream time, the Australian Ar Aboriginal sister goddesses, the Wawalock, were swallowed whole by Yurlunger, the great rainbow serpent. Oppressed by darkness in the belly of the serpent, the Wawalock wept until they were reborn from Yurlunger back into the light. You see what I'm saying? back into the light. It's almost like you feel like you might be in the belly of the beast, right? But you're going to, through your compassion and through your perseverance, even that feeling of vulnerability, it's going to break you out of, of that so-called belly of the beast into the sun, into the light, okay? I love that. So just hang tight, pile number threes. That's what your North Node wants to tell you. If you're going through a difficult time, if you're going through a rough patch, the, rough patch, the sun is going to shine on you once again. It cannot always be dark. It cannot always be night, right? The sun has to come in, okay? And 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 this is what you're you're facing right now. Is the sun about to peek out through the clouds and shine on your beautiful skin, okay? So let's get into the reading we have the five of cups the two of staves which is the two of wands we have the sun card with the zor zoria uh we have the eight of cups yamana with balance okay so this is the temperance card we have the ten of pentacles the four of cups the five of pentacles the princess of cups and we have the seven of pentacles so right here i'm just seeing like you rebuilding right <laughs> there's a bit there is a rebuilding of there's a rebuilding of balance and taking up where you left off, picking up where you left off, excuse me, here, okay? And I know I kind of just, I didn't go in my natural order, but I had to say this, pile number threes. I had to say this to you. 
Yeah, you're definitely coming back into a state of balance and picking up where you left off. I don't know why I'm getting that. And reaping a lot of rewards from the fruit of your labor. There's going to be a lot of abundance and rewards coming in for you, especially <laughs> pile number threes, because in the Rider Waite Tarot deck, it's usually a sign of contemplation with the Seven of Pentacles. Like, oh man, I have manifested and worked on something so much that I've, I've built this to... to as far as it can go, so to speak. Should I work on something else? But there is nothing else in, in this depiction of the Seven of Pentacles for this goddess or for this, you know, this feminine energy to work on, okay? They're just about to, they're just looking very proud at what they've sown and what they've grown so far, right? So again, uh, let's move into the center of your reading with the sun, the Zora, and the five of pentacles. Again, it cannot always be night, okay? There is light. There is resurrection. There is protection. There is this glow coming in. It could be a glow up, pile number threes. I don't know why I'm getting glow up <laughs> from this. From the five of pentacles to the sun, you're about to glow up, okay? Or you're glowing up somehow some way and this is happening in real time my dears okay i do want to read a little bit of the zora maybe you all are getting like a new hairstyle you could be getting your hair hold on sorry you could be getting your hair braided these ladies have their hair braided okay <laughs> maybe you ever hear that sentiment when you look good you feel good and maybe you could just be <clears throat> you know, getting a haircut or a hairstyle, new revamping your image or something like that to make you feel better. You know what I'm saying? Um, just as a little pick me up. And then that's going to reverberate into your energetic state, right? Thus reverberating back into the world. So maybe you're feeling a little lackluster because you haven't really been like really focus on your self-care regimens or something like that and then you pick it back up and then you start to feel like yourself again pile number threes okay and and and, and then within doing that you start to feel more vigor for life reinvigoration and then you start to be back on your path right and 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 as humans we have ebbs and flows constantly of like regression and, and moving forward generate regeneration and um you know, the lack thereof, so little, little deaths, so to speak, and then regenerations, right? I know the, the French say la petite morte, right? So let's see this sign. So yeah, so let's read a little bit from the guidebook. It says the sun, the Zorya. In Russian mythology, the three Zorya are goddesses attendants to the sun god, as well as bringing warmth and light to the world. The sun represents the brightness of intellect, creativity, and fertility. Beautiful, beautiful energy pile number threes, okay? But yeah, it cannot always be light, and the sun is about to shine on your beautiful and handsome faces, pile number threes, okay? So again, let's go back to the beginning of your reading with the five of cups and the ten of pentacles. With the Five of Cups here, it's like you're moving forward regardless, even though maybe you were let down or disappointed in the past, right? You mourn for that past, but you still let it go, right? Or you have mourned for that past, but now you're moving forward, okay? Now you're picking up where you left off, so to speak. Are you picking up what you have and you're moving towards abundance? You're moving towards longevity. You're moving towards um, prosperity, even if that's with less than what you had initially, if that makes sense. Like currently, you're moving forward towards uh, the things that you've always wanted in life, right? Even if as of now you have less or maybe even less partnerships, less people, right? Less people than you had before, right? But you're mourning the past, but you're still moving forward, okay? Which I think is fantastic. Again, with the with the Ten of Pentacles being here, you're creating like this threshold, like you're moving into this threshold of abundance, okay? And I think it's interesting too, because look at this Ten of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles. And you have like 
look at this is reminding me of the family tree and then you have this arc that's just inundated with pentacles and growth and prosperity and it's just like you're entering this threshold of like abundance and beauty and significance and something that's long term is going to be long term for you pile number threes and that's what your 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 north node is trying to tell you like it might have been sullen sullen is that a word <laughs> It might have not felt great to lose out on these three cups, but by you picking up what you've had, what you had, right? You didn't just say, you didn't put out the baby with the bath water. You took the baby and you said, okay, we'll dump the water and, and let's go. Let's move forward with our lives and still getting what we want out of life, right? Even if it wasn't with the original set of tools or the set of people that we came in it with, right? You're still moving forward. With the two of staves, two of wands, and the four of cups, look, you're planning. You are planning. You are planning and you are continuously still moving towards your goals and your objectives. Maybe there was a point in this where you had to take some time to just sit back. Maybe you were just so full of something, okay? Maybe you're just so full of something that it was like you've seen this cup that was being offered to you, that was lingering around, and you just, for some, for the for the life of you, couldn't understand why can't I pick up this cup? Am I that full? It's like, oh, I want to drink that. I want it. I want to drink it because it's going to make me feel better, but I just can't seem to get to it. Or I won't let myself get to it, okay? You could have been dealing uh, with an apathetic state, but it was almost like this is all a part of the process anyway. This was a part of the process, okay? Also, the Four of Cups in the tarot does signify cancer, the zodiac sign cancer, okay, <laughs> to, to be specific. Um, so it, you had to let go of certain things in your past, right? Because when I think about cancer i kind of think uh, the sign cancer i think about like in a south node regard to move forward towards your objective you have to let certain things go or you couldn't take everything with you in order to move forward right with the eight of cups and the princess of cups yeah you, you're and and look this prince this eight of cups in particular is walking towards the sunlight but you're you're leaving what no longer serves you okay and this could be immaturity, this could be inexperience, this could be um, your youth. And not and not in not in your heart. You're always gonna be youthful in heart, but in the way you carry your emotions. You're becoming more mature emotionally, right? More grounded. Not as indecisive, not as much of a novice, not as wet behind the ears, right? You're progressing in your emotional world, in your emotional life, pile number threes. And with Yemen, Yamana, balance, and the seven of pentacles, you're coming in from the depths. Like, look at Yamana. She's coming in from the depths. And it's almost like she's bringing what she learned through being in the depths with her to finish uh to finish off or to to reap these rewards with the seven of pentacles because in this deck with this seven of pentacles i'm just thinking like how proud you are to have built all this and now you're about to reap the rewards of what you built i want to read a little bit of yamana from the goddess tarot Let's see. So it says balance with Yamana. Okay. It says Yamana, the Santeria, the Santeria goddess of the ocean is often called upon to provide rain. Look, and what, what does this say? When it rains, it pours, right? Oppression. Okay, so it says, again, y Yamana, the Santeria goddess of the ocean, is often, called upon the is often called to provide rain, excuse me, water that brings forth life and nurtures the earth. Like the waters of the womb, 
she symbolizes the divine balance between heaven and earth. And that's what I, it's almost like you called in this rain, but then it start pouring and then it start flooding. Okay. And then you're like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you kind of got a little stuck in the flood, so to speak. And there were certain things, maybe even personality traits or, um, energies that you had to ward off, that you had to like bring back into a state of balance uh, before reaping these rewards or before even going towards this Ten of Pentacles, right? But you're about to reap the rewards because you balance the rain, right? You 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 evened out uh, what was happening around you, okay? You evened out your emotions is what I'm getting. Pile number threes. Okay, so let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Tell me more, God. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes from their north node. Guidance, wisdom, and insight from pile number threes, north node, Spirit. <clears throat> Guidance, wisdom, and insight from Paul for Three's North Node. Thank you. So this is two cards here. We have card number 21, the universe. The universe has your back. God, spirit, source, energy, your higher self has your back right now. And then we have card number five, uh, financial material changes. This could have been, I felt like this maybe, um, this energetic whirlpool or whirlwind could have been due to maybe... Uh, financial or material changes, maybe a little hardships, or maybe like, um, uh, almost like feeling like you've regressed in your pursuit to, to your financial or material growth. Right. But God's spirit source energy was there to, to catch you. Right. Maybe you were like I said earlier, that folly, that like, oh, you know, this is going to work. Everything's going to be okay. And while everything is always okay, right? Because what's that saying? If it's not the, if it's not okay, then it's not the end. God's spirit source energy has your back. There's a state of completion here that you had to go through in order to uh, achieve these levels of wealth or this levels of, these levels of abundance that you were looking for, okay? Let's pull one more card. Tell me more, spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Advice, guidance, and wisdom from their north node. Okay, look at this. We have card number four, rest and rejuvenate. So this is, I think this is like the four, is this the four of swords? This could have been the four of swords in this deck. I'm not certain. And it's interesting because we have card number 21, two and one is three, card number four, and then card number five. So there was a progression to get to now I'm, I'm in the swing of things. Now I'm feeling energized. Now I'm gaining back momentum, right? I feel like you you took a break. God, spirit, source, energy, maybe it was even calling you to take a little break, take a little chill pill, regather your strength or your energy. Maybe you have been feeling a little out of whack lately, pile number threes, but I feel like your north node was still going to prevail regardless. You weren't going to stray too far from the path to where you couldn't get back again, right? Maybe you, I don't know why I just got, like you left a, a trail of breadcrumbs, you know, behind you. So like, just to protect yourself, like, oh, if I did venture too off, of course, at least I could look back and then go, go back to where I was, right? With rest and rejuvenate you took some time i just feel like you just took some time and that, that could have had a, a impact on your finances or or things of that nature but ultimately everything is going to be recentered and also what this card is giving me is the law of entropy right the law is it entropy the law of thermodynamics which is uh the universe's natural the universe's natural state is chaotic first things have to become a little chaotic before the cleanup happens before you clean things up and things are spotless again it's like the natural cycle of the universe chaos right the law of entropy things have to be chaotic before they're cleaned up before they're refined okay and this is what I, i'm getting you know at the bottom of the deck we have card number 15 with temptation in reverse so i have a feeling like you had to take some time to maybe ward off certain temptation whereas like maybe 
it's almost like it sprang up on you or something, okay? But God, spirit, source, energy has your back and had your back the whole time. So let's see. Let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving clear, concise, accurate messages to our pile number threes. God, clear, concise, accurate messages for pile number threes. Guidance and messages from their north node. Guidance and messages from their north node. I'm feeling like I should take this card. And we have card number 47, Grand Cross Provoker. Yeah, you are at like a... A crossroads in your life, uh, maybe now or in the recent past, right? In the, in the most recent past, you're at a crossroads. You could have went north, south, east, or west. And I feel, I, I feel like pile number threes. You were almost. It was like this glitch. You know what I'm saying? Like this glitch in the system. This glitch, glitch in the matrix, to where you just. It was almost like a state of paralysis because you had so many options to where you could go. You just stood in one place for a minute, okay? Which isn't bad all the time. Sometimes we need to just sit down and let weigh every option before making a decision, right? And I feel like that's what you did. You, you took some time, you rested, you rejuvenated yourself, you prayed, you prayed some more. And um, I feel like God's spirit source energy heard you and was like, okay, let's get it. Let's Let's get back into the swing of things, right? With car number seven, car number 47, Grand Cross Provoker. So ultimately four and seven, that's 11. So that's a master number. So I feel like maybe thoughts were turning into things or thoughts were manifesting quickly at a rapid pace, right? And there was this certain like initiation stage or initiation period that you had to go through before you could, okay, start taking action again, start moving back. Um, how you were or better, you know, you just have to had to rebalance yourself, which is fine. That that that's life. That's natural as as a human, right? Okay, so let's pull some cards to conclude this reading. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for granting pile number threes and myself clear, concise, accurate messages to conclude their reading. Messages and guidance from their North Node Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages and guidance from pile number three's North Node. Thank you. Thank you. One more card. Okay. So we have... Your commitment is being tested, first quarter moon. This was the second card that came out. Your hard work is paying off, new moon in Capricorn. And then we have a new start is coming, new moon. So this is a very auspicious card. I have a feeling some, you're on the precipice of something, right? Um, at the bottom of the deck, we had emotions are running high, super moon. I feel like that's where you came from. There was a lot of emotions that you had to sort out and you did, okay? Um, now I feel like now that you're back into the swing of your, maybe your normal routine or just picking up where you left off. Now it's like, okay, now your commitment is being tested. So ace this test, right? And I feel like God's spirit source energy, since they're with you right now, you're, you're going to ace the test. Okay. Uh, your hard work is paying off. Yeah. Like you're shaking off the debris of the past. You're shaking off the things that were kind of like holding you back. And I felt like... I felt like it took some time and it took some work, but now it's paying off and now you're being brought back into uh, alignment pile number threes. And a new start is coming. Yeah, it's, I feel like I'm shocked that the death card hasn't came out just for transitional you know, purposes, right? Transitioning from one attitude to another, transitioning from one state into another, transitioning from one um, maybe circumstance to another, right? what a new start is coming but this is a very auspicious card and it just signifies that you're turning a new leaf and 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 this is a it's a great leaf you're 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 getting back into the things that you've been saying that you've wanted the things that you have been saying that you've been wanting and you're really taking action on the 3d to manifest that okay pile number three so 
with that being said my dreamy dreamers awesome reading you know I just keep getting it cannot always be the night it cannot always be darkness and the sun is shining on you once again I think we're still in Leo season so I feel like maybe it was just the transition from um the strong energies that really took hold of us during what was it before Leo season it wasn't was it cancer Gemini it was Gemini season I believe uh so like the kind of fickle energy the back and forth energy of Gemini season I could be wrong <laughs> and then going into Leo season kind of like it was it was an interesting recalibration okay so with that being said pile number threes I love you so much my dreamy dreamers if you like this reading if it resonated with you please hit that like button like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends and anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today again my dreamy dreamers I love you so much and I'll see you in our next reading bye Hey, pile number fours, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose the star card in regards to messages and guidance from your north node. So please bear with me, pile number fours. I am not an astrologer by any means. Um, I, I really enjoy astrology and I like to dabble. So um, if these aren't completely accurate, please give me grace. <laughs> and uh, definitely... Um, check out different meanings and 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 research and look up um, north node meanings and astrology for yourself okay <clears throat> so with the star card here some of you all uh north node might be an aquarius please don't quote me on that but it could be an aquarius okay if not if not they don't have to be right your north node does not have to be in the sign of aquarius for this reading to resonate with you you can just resonate with the attributes that this card the star card or it's uh it's zodiac correspondent with aquarius uh you know means to you right so let's say that you do have a north node in aquarius or if you don't you just resonate with aquarius energy in general to propel you forward in life um this would kind of like look like you really really being knowledgeable and almost like you expanding upon claire i think it's claire cognizance like knowing things without knowing why or how you know them it's almost like a gift right so you're clear like you're clear clairsentient claircognizance uh might be flaring up right now like you could have a lot of energetic downloads or um downloads in general about life and uh you know the meanings of it right i feel like you could have like a very innovative streak to you especially moving forward in your life whether it be in the realms of technology or whether it be just in any regard right i feel like you are the innovator you are almost like the trendsetter so to speak with the star card here as well you could uh really value healing especially healing yourself in order to heal the world or to heal other people as well okay uh with the star card here uh i feel like you can also place high emphasis on your dreams being fulfilled in this lifetime and uh helping other people to facilitate and 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 um give birth to their dreams as well pile number fours okay I feel like Aquarius's you guys could all Aquarius energy tends to be a little emotionally detached and it may seem that way but I feel like they just transmute their emotions in, in, in different ways than other signs like maybe under the radar so it might seem like Aquarius's might have the capacity to be kind of cold or a little like you know standoffish or a little aloof but in reality they're just transmuting a lot of energies that they're processing and they're doing so under the radar okay pile number four so this could resonate with you in some somehow some way all right but I digress let's move forward in your reading we have at the bottom of the deck the prince of pentacles I feel like you're getting this was a, kind of like a reoccurring theme throughout uh, the readings as well, pile number four, throughout the rest of the readings. You're getting back into the swing of things. You're getting back into your normal day-to-day -day routine. And I felt like it, it was almost like pulling teeth, so to speak, right, with the Prince of Pentacles. But now since you are here, now since you are up and at them, you are doing things in a meticulous order. You're taking your time, too. You're not rushing into things. You're just taking your time. Um, I think I've said on this channel before, 
most people overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what, what they can do in five years. And for some reason, I feel like that applies for y'all, pile number four. The, and, and the messages and the guidance that's coming from your North Node is take things one step at a time because what could have happened in the recent past is maybe you all could have been experiencing some type of burnout and you had to really heal yourself with the Star card. The Star card also signifies deep healing, okay? And, and the healing of self allows the healing of the world too, even if that's just in proximity, you know what I'm saying? So like you healing yourself could heal your, your neighbor or your friend or your, your parents or something like that, right? But with the Prince of Pentacles, I'm getting that your North Node is signaling and guiding you to take things one step at a time so you don't face those burnout moments. So you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So you don't feel just depleted from doing what you love or getting to where it is that you want to go because we're humans who tend to have a finite amount of energy per day. So we have to very we have to balance that energy as well as we can, you know what I mean? We have to really uh, attribute more energy in certain aspects than other aspects of, of our day to day, right? And that's what keeps that healthy balance. So that might mean getting back on your, you know, morning routine or getting back to sleeping uh, early so you could get up early to do what it is that you have to do in order to sustain your future, right? The seeds that you're planting today is going to be the harvest that you grow tomorrow or whenever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so you got to plant those seeds today so you can reap the rewards that you sow, you know, that you want to, to, to come to fruition, right? All right, so let's read off your cards. We have card number three, Fertility, with Est Sana Teli, okay? So this is the Empress card. We have the Five of Staves, which is the Five of Wands. We have the Eight of Swords, Three of Cups, Queen of Pentacles, Princess of Cups, which is the Page of Cups. <clears throat> we have the Ace of Swords, Princess of Staves, which is the Page of the Page of Wands. We have the Eight of Staves, Eight of Wands, and we have card number two, Wisdom, Sara Savati, which is the High Priestess. Okay, so I love this. It's interesting that uh, it's so funny. I'm. <laughs> It's kind of like I'm in a mental lag. I, I didn't realize, or maybe I just kind of like pushed to the back of my mind when I was like pulling out the cards that this was the high priestess. And when I was saying with the star card, you could be gathering your clear. Like you, you just have this deep knowing without knowing how you know, you just know. And to me, that's what the high priestess is all about. It's just this deep understanding, this wisdom, right? that's coming into fruition into their lives. So I digress. Let's move forward to the center of your reading with the Eight of Swords and the Princess of Staves, which is a page of wands. So pile number four is what what I was see what I'm seeing here, right? Is that maybe in the maybe right now or in the most recent past, like literally Mike, like maybe a few days ago, um, with the Princess of Staves and the Eight of Swords, you were looking to begin something. You were excited about something. You were you, you kind of had this fire lit under you about going for something, taking a chance, like going on a new adventure, uh, going on a new adventure or feeling more adventurous, right? But there was something that you wanted to get in the realm of like a green light to do, okay? And you got in your head. I feel like last minute you kind of just got in your head and like, you know, you stopped, right? Because with the pages, it's always like a spark. It's always like an initiation. It's an initial reaction to something, right? So maybe you have felt like, oh my goodness, like this is such a great idea. I want to do this. Like this is something I want to do. And then lo and behold, you started to place limitations or you started to argue for your limitations. That's what I always attribute the eight of, of uh, swords being, right? arguing for your limitations, placing yourself in limits where limits just really don't exist. You're creating your own limits, right? And I felt like you kind of stopped yourself from this budding idea, right? Um, maybe not too far from, you know, the past, right? You could be dealing with a younger fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, that could be, you know, going through a lot, right, as well. And maybe your what your guidance and wisdom is telling you about this situation is just to keep going. You can't let anybody else's um, 
kind of like things that they're going through affect you, okay? That that could be a story. But in 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 the general sense, you could have had been on the brink of something on the precipice of a really good idea and you kind of got in your head about it but with the great thing about the eight of swords is it's it's self-imposed so just how you create it you can diminish it you can release it right and you have that responsibility uh for yourself to do that right so going back to the beginning of the reading with card number three fertility est sana telly and the princess of cups um, I feel like, yeah, you're just, I feel like maybe you took some time to just like be reintroduced to your feminine side. Maybe you were taking massive action or taking a lot of action towards your goals and wasn't really seeing things like turn out how you wanted and kind of just took some time to be more lighthearted, be more carefree, receive, right? Very feminine energy right here with um, card number three, the Empress Fertility. And you just took some time maybe to yourself to do you to figure out what you wanted or, you know, how you want to move forward. But you did so lightheartedly. OK, also with the Page of Cups, again, I feel like your intuition has been very heightened. Right. Um, yeah, your intuition has been very heightened. And for some reason, you could be feeling very youthful, too, or be looking very youthful or just be uh, wanting to explore more of uh, your beauty or sense of um, luxury side. It is what I'm getting, especially with the Princess of Cups and fertility. You want to experience luxuries or something. And maybe the luxury is you don't have to work every day. Or you, you don't have to um, do something that you don't want to do every day. That is a luxury because, <laughs> you know, excuse me, not everyone can say that they don't have to go to work every single day or they don't have to do what they don't want every single day. I think that's good to sharpen yourself and do the things that you don't want to do on a daily basis because it, it refines you. It, it gives you character, right? But I'm feeling like even here, maybe in the past, you were resting a little bit on your laurels, pile number fours, just resting in your tranquility, just receiving a lot, maybe not giving as much as you felt like you, you wanted to or you could as well. Um, yeah. But with the five of staves, five of wands and the ace of swords, I felt like there was an internal battle that you were going through with different facets of your personality and you kind of shook that off maybe you had a revelation about okay I'm doing this and it's me versus me versus me versus me and you're like okay enough is enough right you <clears throat> you stuck your sword in the sand so to speak to stake your claim back on your mental back on your mental stability your your mental uh balance right with the Three of Cups and the Eight of Staves, I feel like there's some type of celebration coming in or there's some type of unification with those conflicting energies coming in. You're, you've balanced that uh, you have to eliminate some and, and you took the good ones and you balanced out that fight. It's like you kissed and made up with, your, with that internal battle, right? You kissed and made up with what 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 you were facing those quote unquote demons right not not in actuality okay but the 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 shadowy aspects of your personality you integrated it okay five became three and then it became one right and that that came in very quick it was almost like overnight uh how you transitioned or how you uh transmuted those energies within you okay it's literally like night and day. Um, with the Queen of Pentacles and Wisdom, Sara Savati, I feel like you you knew what you need you knew what you need to do in order to be this Queen of Pentacles, in order to be this loving, nurturing, but also abundant uh, queen or this abundant energy, whether male or female. You're tapping into your uh, your knowing about certain things and you're just allowing yourself to, or you had allowed yourself to, you know, 
You gave yourself grace in a time when you needed it. And now you're picking back up where you left off. You're picking up the slack and you're like, let's get to it. Because while I am emotional and nurturing, I'm also about my business, right? With the Queen of Pentacles. I'm also about sustaining my stability, you know? So I can't just let that go. But you you have... You have matured, <laughs> pile number four. Is you, you, you have gained some type of clarity and insight and wisdom about where you want to go and you're back onto that path, okay? So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Forgiving our pile number fours, clear, concise, accurate messages from their north node. What does their north node want pile number fours to know right now? Clear, concise, accurate messages from pile number fours, north node spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages from pile number fours, north node. Thank you. So we have card number three, partnerships. Partnerships and alliances. I feel like someone had to pull you out <laughs> of the darkness, pile number uh, four. Someone, you know, came in to really help you and really help balance um, balance you out, okay? And you have, people are with you. They are here to support you. You have a lot of support around you, a lot of love, a lot of people who care about you and want to see you succeed and grow and prosper. Because innately, you want them to su succeed and grow and prosper. You have a lot of good energies around you. Tell us more, Spirit. I feel like you also could be in a state of collaboration to where, um, you know, you're helping others and others are helping you. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages from pile number um, four's north node. We have card number two, spiritual union. Yeah. So this could be a lover who came in to help you or a soulmate connection. Maybe you're telepathically inclined to reach out to someone in your time of need and they're like always there for you and vice versa. This could be the integration of the masculine and the feminine too is what I'm getting as well. Coming back in to balance you out and to um, acquiesce to your needs and your wants, okay? Two and three is five. So this was after a long bout of change or like kind of like, uh, yeah, a transitional period. Tell me more, Spirit. One more card. Messages and, and guidance from pile number four's north node. Messages and guidance from pile number four's north node. Oh, oh my gosh. Pile number four. Pile number four. Card number four. It could be seeing four, four, four a lot. And we have heart chakra. Yeah, I feel like you you are open. You have opened up your heart and are now receptive to help. And we literally had come out two, three, and four. So you're on a trajectory. Look at this. Look at this. Card number one at the bottom of the deck, triumphant success. Where you put your, where you kind of like mentally put your foot down, now you're, you're being resurrected. You're being rescued by either yourself or you let someone in to help you. Uh, pile number fours and it was like you were psychically kind of like inclined to okay but there's triumph there's a triumph there's success coming your way and we have one two three four and one two three four look up the angel number one two three four also when you add all those digits together it's one again so you're starting over and you're you're kind of like being brought into the precipice of this brand new beginning. It's like you're making manifest. Think about it. One is uh, leadership. It's uh, innovation. It's doing things that haven't been done before. It's even taking a, a path of solitude for some. It doesn't seem like that's what you're doing here, but you're take, uh, for some, you may have went through a path of solitude, right? That could also be your uh, your life path number. Also, pile number four is uh, what I was getting is that card, uh, the number one stands for card number one in the tarot, which is the magician. So you're manifesting things again back into your life, whereas maybe you felt like your manifestations were like delayed or put on hold or something like that. But I feel like 
something had to happen so you can open the portal of your heart. Like you had to go on this like sabbatical or like this. You had to take your time with something in order to open up and to open up to help, to being receptive to help. And this took time. It's like people had to beg you to accept their help, but eventually you did. And it, it really, it that in and of itself helped you, okay? Maybe you're so used to giving to others, right? Even with uh, the Empress card, you're so used to giving to others. You don't even know how it feels. Like, you know how it feels to be helped, but like maybe not as of recently, you know? Tell me more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate advice and guidance. Okay, so y'all got three cards from the... Um, you all got three cards from the Black Moon Astrology deck at the bottom of the deck, the sun. Card number one, spirit. Spirit's with you at all times. Spirit has been really guiding you on your path. Look at this. So we have card number four with Venus love. Maybe you were letting love in, letting love preside in your life. Card number 24, Pisces, I believe, okay? I'm getting that share song. Do you believe in love after love? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't even listen to that song. I am not even kind of of that age, but that's what I'm getting. And look at this, card number 38, Earth Element Stability. Yeah, you're regrounding yourself, pile number fours. Um, some of you all as a North Node could be in Pisces, or you might have a lot of Pisces. You could be a Pisces, your sun, sun sign could be Pisces, or you could have a lot of Pisces highly aspected in your chart. And maybe this was where these these emotions, these deep influxes of emotions were coming from. Also, you, I know we had, uh, the moon was in Pisces a couple days ago. So this could have been a maybe a side effect from the moon being in Pisces. But I feel like maybe right now, your moon could also be in Pisces uh, for some of you, pile number four. And you just wanted to focus on love, whether that's self-love or loving another or feeling loved by someone else. Maybe you were fiending for that or, or really wanting that in your life and you got it and maybe you took some time to like focus in on that, but now you're back to work, right? You're back to uh, maintaining your stability and bringing more stability into your life, okay? Restabilizing is also what I'm getting here. Um, but yeah, let's... Let's conclude your reading with some Moonology cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for blessing our pile number fours with clear, concise, accurate messages. Last messages, guidance, wisdom, and insight to conclude pile number fours. Reading messages and guidance from the North Node Spirit. Clear, concise messages and guidance from pile number Fours North Node. Ooh. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages from Pile Number Fours North Node to conclude their reading. This one mix mix these up really good. There we go. Clear, concise, accurate messages from Pile Number Fours North. So maybe I'll just take this card. It says your hard work is paying off. New moon and Capricorn. Yeah, I feel like you've been working hard and maybe, ha maybe, okay, this is so funny. It's like you felt like you've been working hard, but you've been hardly working or no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like God, spirit, source energy is like, look, you've been working hard and that's why in the recent past you've been work you've been hardly working. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we have at the bottom of the deck, the energy is gaining momentum, waxy moon. I feel like your your energy is now gaining momentum. You're now back into the swing of things with this new moon in Capricorn. And it's also giving me that like you're getting back into a routine, like the Prince of Pentacles would suggest, which is the Knight of Pentacles, which is stabilizing yourself, ultimately, pile number four. So with that being said, my lovely dreamy dreamers, I love you so much, pile number four amazing energy. I felt like you you just wanted to take some time out for yourself to love and to feel love and to focus on maybe even a relationship or just loving yourself or loving someone else. And uh, 
things are now being in a stabilizing themselves, right? You're now coming back into a state of balance, a state of chi, so that you can uh, move forward in your life and move forward in progression, okay? So with that being said, Palm number fours, I love you so much, my dreaming dreamers. If you like this reading, if it resonated, please hit the thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. I love you, love you, love you, dreaming dreamers, and I'll see you in our next reading. Bye.